Eagle or is et cetera. It, and, it, uh, so absolutely we just, right. We're way off, and that gets to Loretta Lynch and the FBI. And, uh, and even if he would have been identified to catch him in time. No, that's the, I mean, again, the whole, right. administration of, of yeah. justice here right. was lacking. It happened with Dylan Roof, and it happened yeah. in, in a lot of other cases. Right, and they were and they were using the past two decades of gun tragedies, right? And they're tragedies. No, we're not, no one's making light of any of it, right? Absolutely not. It's, it's dead serious stuff. But they're just, they, they're completely misdiagnosing the problem and providing a wrong solution. And the one bill they're pushing is, is off. And the ACLU, who's not known for being a right-wing bastion, opposes them on due process, etc. Absolutely. Well, we're getting a lot of wisdom from you in this interview about current events. Let's talk about some more wisdom that you're dropping on everybody. On June 28th, yep. I believe it's coming out. Tuesday, right on. American Underdog, Proof That Principles Matter. Yep. Tell yeah. us about what made you write the book. Yeah, I got a book coming out. Uh, first few chapters are just fun, uh, highlighting the win over Eric Cantor, majority leader. Everyone wants to talk about a victory, don't yeah, they? Yeah, no, so that's, great. it was good. And everyone misdiagnosed it, right? The New York Times, they just made up stories. So we try to get it right and make it a little fun. And then more seriously, I ran on, right? I, I went to Princeton Seminary back when, did a PhD in economics. And so those are the principles, right? And so James Madison, I went to Princeton Seminary, where roughly speaking, he went, wrote the Constitution. He studied Hebrew just for kicks after he finished undergrad, and that's the author of our Constitution, right? So I argue there's three pillars that are the foundation for the country that have made us uh, great like we are, and the Judeo-Christian tradition is the utter foundation. It's not some little band of religion, right? It's the, it's the entire arc of Western Civ that founded everything else, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, founded all of it, right? And then the rule of law, the Constitution, human rights language comes only out of that tradition, And in 1776, you also get my buddy across the pond, Adam Smith, in the Scottish Enlightenment, right? Also another Presbyterian, just by fluke, right? And so some great things line up. And all of that is reversible, right? They've launched us from 1000 bucks a year to 50000 bucks a year. And now growth is 0.7%. The deficit this year under our own leadership is $535 billion dollars. We have $100 trillion in unfunded liabilities. I document all this, try and put it in some fun uh, stories. And uh, we're, we're fundamentally off track in a serious, serious way. And the group that's going to pay the price is the kids. We're throwing all this on the kids. All the major systems are insolvent in less than 18 years. Medicare, Social Security, done, 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 done. It's a scary prospect that not only are our institutions failing us, but there's this idea of political culture right. that has been lost That's right. over right. time. Yeah. We got to this point in our nation's history yeah. not just because of the print, the, the uh, policies, right. but the principles in our American political culture yeah. that got us here. Right. Why is this such an attack by the left, who presumably are from that same political culture that we have? Yeah. Why is it such an attack on that? Is it just in the names of you know political expediency for this next election and the next cycle and the next cycle? No, I mean, I, I think... It, it, the answer is very difficult, right? There's some something psychologically wrong with the hard left. They no longer love the country, right? I'm not talking about Democrat. I'm talking about the hard left, right? They, they're deconstructionists in philosophy at Harvard for the past 20 years, if you look at what they're doing. They haven't constructed anything of note, right? So you say, good, you hate free market capitalism. What system do you have in mind? Nothing. Oh, good. You hate Immanuel Kant. You hate Aristotle. You hate Jesus. You hate Moses. Good. Name, name your philosopher. Who do you like? Nothing. Maybe you get a Rousseau in the French Revolution. But they'll be and you just get as quick Marx. to tell you who they hate. Yeah. And if they give you Marx, maybe, but nothing constructive. And good luck constructing a system with those guys, right? Good luck with it. And so that's they fail, the intellectual test. And in, when, in their failure, I think they get upset that, hey, this is the tradition that is unquestioned in bringing you not only the theory, but the results, flourishing human lives for everybody. And it's amazing. Look at South America, right? Brazil right now, what's going on? So we're, the, the left is yelling at us. We're supposed to take in all the refugees. We're supposed to help the poor from all the rest of the world. There wouldn't be any poor, right? If the left, I worked at the World Bank 25 years ago. If the left at that time would have proposed free markets as a solution for the poor, there wouldn't be any poor, right? China and India, two and a half billion people, right? All children of God, right? Just to be clear on this stuff have come out of poverty and are up from 1000 to 9000 bucks per person, right? And that's what the free, they chose the free market system. We're now rejecting it, and it's all reversible, and we're on the downhill slide right now. We've got to turn it around quick. 
We, we definitely have to turn around quick, and we need serious people to turn yep. around quick, yep. which is why we want to turn to the topic we talk about at the end of every interview, yeah. and that's that money and people is what make politics go around. We want to get as much money and people behind you uh, as super, possible. Super. Good. So tell people how they can get in touch with you through social media yeah. and uh, any uh, campaign stuff that you want to talk about. Sure. Obviously, you run for re-election. We fully support you in that. Anything Thank we can you. do to help you, please let us know. But give all the people the, the information. Yeah, just DaveBrat.com. Uh, Dave, B-R-A-T, Brat, like bad boy. DaveBrat.com if you want to hit the red button and help me out financially a little bit. But get on there. If you're in Virginia, got friends in Virginia, spread the word. Have folks get on my email list. If you're not from Virginia, I explain all my votes. I try to explain. I ran on six Republican principles that are outlined in the book yeah, in addition to the foundational stuff I just mentioned. And uh, I, I I didn't make it up, right? It's not original to me. This is, this is the greatest minds in Western Civ, starting with Socrates through Adam Smith. And I just try to lay it out and uh, make it coherent for today. You know, just between me, you, and the thousands of people that listen to the show, I want to make it clear, supporting you is more than just supporting one race for one congressional yeah, exactly. district. It's more of a message because right. of the significance of what your win was yeah. for the grassroots in, right. in the conservative movement. Yeah. Folks, check out uh, the, the website again yeah. is... Uh, DaveBrat.com Dave oh, right and get out there starting next Tuesday which is when you listen to this will be this Tuesday right. American Underdog proof that principles matter yep. on Amazon and Amazon. where finer books are sold awesome Congressman thank you so much for coming on the show thank look you, forward Dave. to seeing you down the road pleasure man great job thank you man hello and welcome my name's Andre Walker and your weekly monologue starts right now last week I closed the monologue asking you to pray for Brexit, British independence from the European Union. Oh my God, did that ship come in. Over 70 million British people, or 52% of those voting, said FU EU. They said no to this undemocratic, monolithic, socialist superstate. Brits are sick of the superstate that meddled in their lives and taxed them without democratic representation. It passed laws to tell us our cucumbers needed to be firm, regulated the shape of bananas and banned Bombay Duck. Bombay Duck? Yeah, you know what that is, right? Oh, okay. Well, it's a frankly disgusting dried fish that is called Bombay Duck because duck is the word for male in Hindi. This food smells so bad, it's similar to the smell of the overnight mail train to Bombay. But don't be put off. After all, it was King George V's favourite food. But in 1997, the EU, or EU as I prefer to call it, made it illegal. Yes, that's right, illegal. Now you imagine, King George were alive today. He's riding around London with four Windsor Greys pulling the Imperial State carriage and he gets stopped for a missing brake light. Just as he's explaining that 18th century carriages don't have brake lights, the officers suspect he's carrying illegal substances. After all, he's got a beard and still lives with his mum despite being married. But he ain't got no blow. He ain't been shooting up no skag neither, snorting the meth, nor toking a splifter of the ganja. By the way, that was my attempt at American slang. Hope you liked it. No, his Britannic Majesty's only crime was to enjoy snacking on small dried fish whilst also being a citizen of the European Union. That won't put him in no K-hole, I'm telling you, blood. But it is still illegal. There's a serious point here. The Anglosphere, that great English-speaking family of nations around the world, don't want government to take over every element of their lives. They want to be free to do what they want to do, buy what they want to buy, live the way they want to live. Because, my brothers and sisters, if your only choice is government, then that is no choice at all. There is only one moment I ever liked from the film Braveheart. It was when the executioner asked William Wallace to beg for mercy, and instead he roared the word, FREEDOM! That was the monologue. Just time to announce the winner of last week's quiz. We asked, what will President Juncker of the EU do to restrict democracy next? John Bull from England. Got it right with, we really don't care what President Juncker thinks anymore. Second prize goes to Donald from New York, who said, we really don't care what Barack thinks either. This is Andre Walker, and we are no longer behind enemy lines. So now we repay your prayers with some prayers of our own. 
We pray for America's freedom tonight, for your right to the Second Amendment, for your right to freedom of speech, and for your right to live your lives without government interference. You prayed for us, we pray for you. Until you are free like us, goodbye. Check out Andre's column at townhall.com. Check him out on Twitter at Andre J.P. Walker. And read Andre's work here, Behind Enemy Lines. Now back to the show. Gene Baradelli, Russ Gallo, back behind me lines here at the Hold Their Feet to the Fire Radio Row, put on by the Federation for American Immigration Reform. Wow, that's a mouthful from a guy from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, joining us right now from the great state of Arizona, Congressman Paul Gozar. I hope I got that right. You got, I didn't. You got it, Gene. Baradelli is one of those names that gets mispronounced <laughs> all the time, so I always like to make sure we get it right. I just think about Ghostbusters. There you go. We're going to call the Congressman from Arizona. How are you doing, sir? I do very good, Gene. Let, let's talk about your involvement here at, at this event and uh, the issues that you want to bring to light. Uh, we were discussing before we started the interview some uh, legislation that's very important to you. So let, let's Absolutely. get into that. Absolutely. So we have two pieces of legislation this week. We have financial services, one of the 12 appropriation bills. And what our, one of our amendments is, is, is the defunding of sanctuary cities. Um, here we have cities in total violation of, of federal law, and uh, what ends up happening, they have to suffice and, and obey that, otherwise no federal funding. So a pretty clear-cut aspect. The second one issue is, is also a military issue that we've actually tried to pass in, uh, numerous times. It's the first time in U.S. history that an illegal was actually allowed to participate in the military uh, under the, what they call the MAVNI program, the Military's Ascension uh, Act. And what this was was a pilot program that allowed legal non-resident, non-citizens, and legal citizens to apply to the military. Um, however, this administration on September 25th of 2014 allowed DACA recipients that don't have the legal premise to be here based upon Congress's oversight of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 4 powers here. And now what they're doing is allowing them going to MAVNI. Why this is important is this is a backdoor amnesty. Because under the MAVNI program, anybody that serves one day in active service in wartime uh, action can get citizenship. So it's important to say, listen, can't do this. This is a violation of the law. And uh, making sure that uh, Congress actually has a sense of that uh, to uphold it. Sir, something called a curse of knowledge. Uh, when you speak to other people who are interested in politics, we all are on the same page, usually with terms. Uh, if you can, for our listeners, describe what a sanctuary city is and why this is something that we need to uh, get a grip on. Well, thank you. That's a great uh, sc- scenario. What ends up happening is the federal government is in charge of immigration policies. And what sanctuary cities are is that they're in total deformation to that policy. So not complying with turning over, uh, like you saw in the Kate Stanley aspect, uh, the incarceration and, and uh, for illegals and then turning them over to ICE. Uh, they defy that application. So what they're in contradiction is is to federal policies that are on the books. They still ask for their federal funding, and what this actually does is say, listen, if you're not going to comply with the law, you're not going to get the federal funding, whether it be for housing, whether it be for roads, whether it be for any of those aspects the federal government is involved in, every nook and cranny, you're not going to get that money. You have to be com- compliant with the law. And that would apply to a city like the People's Republic of New York City, where we come from, and uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio has made it clear with his support of municipal IDs, that he is not at any time going to be following the federal law as it uh, pertains to illegal immigration. Talk a little bit about cities like New York City, San Francisco, and the impact that they're having on their citizens by failing to follow the law. Gene, it's not just there, but also Phoenix and Tucson and Sedona and Flagstaff in Arizona are the same type of, 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 of creatures. Is, is that they're in total deformation, so we're creating a lawless uh, environment. That's the key here, is, is America was great because it followed the law. Everybody applied, was applied the law equally and fairly across the board, no exceptions. And now what we're doing is we're creating a class of people in regards to the illegals that are exempted from all laws, but yet held no harm, not, not harmed by the law at all. And that is non-compliant with the Constitution. Sir, out-of-state tuition rates, um, service in the military... Uh, voting in municipal elections. What are the benefits of being a citizen now? Like, I don't understand if we're if we're just granting all these what used to be rights to citizens to um, residents and just illegal immigrants altogether. Well, my understanding is is that Constitution gave you the rights as a as a citizen, not as a non citizen. 
Um, but that, that tells you the Alinsky's uh, proverb that's actually going underneath here. You have to understand where you're being challenged. The de Blasios, the Barack Obamas, the Hillary Clintons are all Alinskyites in regards to where they're changing fundamentally this, this process called America, called the United States of America. And what ends up happening is in order to defeat that, you have to understand that. So two of the books that when I talk uh, around the country is I ask people to read is Alinsky's Rules for Radicals and uh, you